Alrighty, so I finally have my Six Flags Great Adventure overview of my visit. Um, so in this video, I'm going to discuss my general thoughts on Six Flags Great Adventure. I'm going to compare it to what I originally thought I was going to get into at this park. Um, I'm going to kind of go over my thoughts on the rides. Again, there will be a separate video where I rank all of the coasters at Six Flags Great Adventure um, from my personal experience. And it is a little, um, I, I don't know, I feel like it's a little controversial, but I think it's pretty ex like basic for what people are expecting from me. I know everyone that watches this channel now knows that I'm a little more GP than your average enthusiast, and I definitely have a weird taste in coasters. So again, whenever I make a list or something, I am not saying that this is what the rankings are or this is what the park is viewed as. I am very different when it comes to theme parks and roller coasters. So again, I'm very all about theming and the beauty and trees and nature and uh, stuff like that. More, the overall experience versus intensity. So whenever you hear me commenting on a roller coaster or a theme park, again, it is just my opinion. Take it with a grain of salt. I'm just one little YouTuber. There are many other channels out there with opinions that um, may reflect yours better. But that being said, um, me going into Great Adventure, again, I knew I was going to have a really good time on a, a good chunk of the roller coasters there. I knew the park was going to have a really solid coaster lineup. I did think the, the park was going to upset me in terms of beauty, um, food, operations. I thought I wasn't going to enjoy my time um, all that much. But I'm here to say I actually had an amazing time. Um, so I know a lot of people here think that I think Canada's Wonderland is the best park out there. But anyone that knows me well knows that Dollywood is my favorite. And then obviously all those Orlando parks are my favorite as well before Canada's Wonderland. And I'm here to tell you... I have a new park ahead of Canada's Wonderland as a total package that I think is a better park. So Great Adventure, in my opinion, is definitely way better than Canada's Wonderland could ever be. Um, I enjoyed the roller coasters a lot more than I was even expecting. Um, I really enjoyed the rides outside of the coasters. I enjoyed a couple of the themed areas. So I really liked how they had themed music, keyword themed music. This is something I've been expecting from Canada's Wonderland for quite some time, and I've been kind of disappointed that they don't have it. Um, and they had a really solid uh, flat ride lineup, so I'm going to go over it. So here is Cyborg Cyberspin on the screen right now. I'm actually going to tell you that I didn't thoroughly enjoy this ride. Um, again, when I say that, it still wasn't an amazing um, flat ride, but it wasn't what I was expecting. I really thought this was going to be high on my list of uh, rides that I enjoyed at the park, and it actually ended up being a little lower. That being said, it's not a bad flat ride. It's just not what I was expecting. It's a lot more slow going than I was expecting. A lot of these videos make it look like it's constantly just like flip, flip, flip. But it's more like creak, 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 flip. Um, but uh, it is still fun. It does have no lineup. So if you want to ride it, it had no lineups even on the busy days. Um, again, this is a park that gets super crowded on weekends. And on the weekday that we were there, it was super empty. But now Wonder Woman Lasso of Truth. Um, so this ride was absolutely amazing. It's got a really long ride cycle. It takes a really long time to get to its max speed. But once you're up there, oh man, is it crazy. This was one of the coolest experiences I've had in a long time on a flat ride. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. I didn't get a night ride on it. I know um, a couple of people we were with wanted a night ride on it. I think they got it and they absolutely loved it. Um, a couple of people in our group were marathoning this as well. That's how much they loved it. It's definitely an amazing ride. And uh, I would love to see more of these world record pendulum rides being built at Six Legs Parks. Um, I would even like to see Cedar Fair thinking outside of the box and building like more unique flat rides like this and world record flat rides um, out there as well. I think Six Flags has really um, got a, a good package of rides that they're building. Again, there's a lot of rides at this park that I thought that wouldn't I wouldn't be too impressed by that I ended up coming out of the park being like, wow, that was amazing. Um, but nonetheless, um, there's a ride called Houdini. Um, I There's more to the name. I can't remember it. Comment down below. Again, if I get anything wrong, comment down below. There's a ride called Houdini's. It's a dark ride. It's in, in um, Vacoma Madhouse, I think is what it's called. I had never been in one, and I was blown away. Like, that, for me, won so many bonus points for the park in terms of its collection of rides and how much I love it. That was one of the rides that really pushed the park over. And this one right here on the screen, Justice League, was another one. This is a Universal Studios quality ride that Six Flags is building. 
you have Cedar Fair building these really tacky dark rides that don't do it and they're really boring and they just are not themed and they don't work. And you have Six Flags building um, Metropolis, like this amazing dark ride that's universal quality. I just like it. That really pushed the park over for me as well. It was absolutely amazing. But this ride on the screen, I did not think I was going to enjoy this whatsoever. They looked over cloned. I was like half really excited for it because I wanted to experience it, the keyword experience it. But the other half of me was, I was like, oh, that can't be that exciting. They look cloned. Like, what could it actually do? You just flip here and there. My ride on this thing, I got so many flips and it was such a weird experience. I remember getting off that thing like in shock. More parks need those. Cedar Fair needs it. I want to see more of those. They're amazing. But El Toro is on the screen right now. I came into this park being like, Steel Vengeance is better than El Toro. There's no way El Toro could beat Steel Vengeance. And my first ride on El Toro in the day, Steel Vengeance held its rank as number one coaster. But El Toro was a solid number two and very close. Now, this is where it gets interesting. My night ride on El Toro. So we marathoned this at night. And boy, did this kick Steel Vengeance's butt in terms of ride experience. Those upstop wheels are literally like screeching in pain on this ride because this ride is literally trying to kick you off of it at every point of the ride. It was an amazing experience. This is one of my favorite coasters in the world. It is definitely a better coaster than Seal Vengeance um, at night. Um, and it's just so amazing, the experience altogether. It goes from amazing airtime and trying to kill you to just these really tight turns and maneuvers that like... It's just it's just amazing. It's like an overall amazing ride. Um, it, it feels like the ride is literally trying to fall apart and kill everyone on it, um, which is absolutely amazing. I have never been on anything like it, and it just slaughters anything at my home park, Canada's Wonderland. So I came off of this thing just absolutely adoring it. King Daka. OK, so this ride, I have already been on Top Field Dragster. Um, my first ride on it, I was still scared. All of you have seen my ride photo where my like 8 million chins are flapping in the wind um, and I look shook. Craig is having an amazing time. Um, so I will say this was Craig's number one ride um, at the beginning of the trip. But then when he got his night rides on El Toro, El Toro became his number one ride. He's going to make his video as well explaining what he thought of the park. But King to Cause is an amazing ride. The restraints definitely do kind of ruined the ride a little bit compared to Top Fill Dragster. But I really do like that airtime at the end. I used to think that you didn't wouldn't get airtime on it because it was so drawn out, but you do get airtime on it. So it's definitely an amazing ride. Um, the brake fin at the top does kind of slow you down a bit and ruin that drop over the edge. So Top Fill Dragster definitely, in my opinion, is way better than King Daka. But still an amazing ride that I wish more parks had. Um, Bizarro, which is on the screen right now, ended up being one of my favorite coasters at the park. The zero G roll on this thing made me hate Yukon Strikers zero G roll, whatever they call it. Um, it was amazing. Um, again, I definitely came off of this um, loving this more than Yukon Striker. So for those of you thinking I am really biased with Yukon Striker, that's not the case. Um, so this was an amazing ride. I really liked the dodging elements around um, theming and mist. It was really weird. I don't know how to describe it. It was just super cool dodging theming elements. It's something that we don't really get at Canada's Wonderland. Um, so it was just a really like overall smooth coaster with amazing elements. Now, <laughs> oh man, this coaster. So this coaster and I have a love-hate relationship. I loved the pretzel loop. I don't know what happened with me and it and people on our trip, but I got a rash after riding this thing. Someone else in our group ended up getting a rash the next day riding this thing. I don't know what it is. Something about this got a rash. The rash is all cleared up. Um, we're assuming it was a chemical that they used to clean. Um, maybe someone threw up in our seat before we got on and they cleaned it. I do have sensitive skin um, and I probably reacted bad to the chemical. Um, but I have never had that happen in my life before. But uh, it's a great ride. I wish more um, flying coasters were at other parks. But again, it was an overall good coaster. Nitro. So this is a coaster that I've heard such bad things about. Such bad things about. I have Behemoth at Canada's Wonderland. Behemoth is supposed to be a top tier um, hyper coaster. I'm still struggling right now to figure out which I like better. Behemoth has better airtime, but Nitro has an overall better experience. So that is really difficult for me to say. Um, but the second half of Nitro is much stronger than Behemoth could ever imagine. The first half is really weak it is one of the weakest hypers out there the first half 
but the second half is one of the strongest hypers that I have currently been on. I have not been on Mako yet, so again, understand that I have not been on Mako, but compared to Behemoth, it is a much stronger second half. It was super fun. It's a gorgeous setting with the trees and the lake just behind it. It is one of the most beautiful settings on a roller coaster I've ever seen. Going up that lift hill is just absolutely stunning. Um, and it's definitely hated on way too much. This is not a coaster that should be hated on. It's super fun. I did not get a night ride on it. Um, Batman. So I don't like inverts. So my opinion on inverts is garbage. Don't listen to my opinion on inverts. In fact, when I say I don't like an invert, it's actually a compliment to the ride. The reason I don't like inverts is I get a really weird sensation from the forces where it feels like all the blood is rushing to my legs and I have a fear of blood. So if I see blood, I faint. If I talk about blood for too long, I'll actually faint. Um, and that feeling actually makes me really nauseous. And that's the reason I don't like it. So that is a compliment to the ride. Batman the ride did give me that sensation um, epically. So uh, that is a compliment to the ride. That means the ride is super forceful and it's really good. And I will say Craig absolutely loved it. And uh, he went and rewrote it um, because it was such a fun ride. So again... I'm complimenting the ride with how much I don't like the ride, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, again, as you're seeing a really solid coaster lineup at this park, on top of it, you had amazing attractions like Houdini's, um, the stand-up coaster. Oh, this was another one. This one was super forceful. So again, when I say super forceful and painful in my legs, it's a compliment to the ride. I did not like this ride, which means it is a good ride um, in terms of forces on my legs. It is definitely extremely forceful. It was way more forceful than I remember Mantis ever being at Cedar Point. Um, so super exciting. The people in our group loved it. Again, it's such a great park. Um, it, it was so much better than I thought. The food was so much better than my home park, Canada's Wonderland. We had chicken fingers and fries. We had burrito bowls. The food was great. Um, the people at member services were super nice to us. We definitely had a bad experience trying to get the camera gear into the park. It was resolved and fixed. Um, but, um, other than that, I had a really great visit. The park is much more beautiful than I was expecting. It is a great Six Flags park. It is number two. So, um, for seasonal parks, Dollywood is my favorite park. Great Adventure is my second favorite park. Um, and Canada's Wonderland is my third park for overall experience. But if we're talking coasters, Canada's Wonderland moves down the list greatly. And Cedar Point takes spot number three. I feel like I just triggered everyone and the dislike buttons just increased. Anyways, Hopefully you enjoyed this um, quick review of A Great Adventure. Um, hopefully I didn't trigger you guys too much. Again, I'm going to rank all the coasters um, in a video coming out shortly. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and share this video for others to enjoy. Have a good one, guys. Bye.